Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. This is D A E A C sharp E tuning, and it's one of my favourite tunings outside of standard tuning. And I've recently discovered it might be one of the easiest tunings to create some epic ideas in. So in this video, I'm going to show you a simple way you can use this tuning to create some epic song ideas. But first, let's hear why this tuning sounds good and how you can tune your guitar to this tuning. So I want to ask you, why do you think this tuning puts you in a certain feeling? So much so that even minor chords like this one have a you know a different feel to them compared to standard tuning. Well this is largely due to the, the 12 string kind of effects that you get with the doubling of tuned strings. So we have these double A tuned strings and double E. And this gives us um, to be specific, an A major chord of a D in the bass, so we're situated in a major kind of sound. So this means when we use this tuning, we're working from a sound already, we've got some direction to the song, let's say. Uh, compared to when we think about standard tuning, where it's more like a blank canvas, where it's largely up to the, you know, the player to choose the direction and the feel of the song. This tuning is largely used by Midwest emo bands, but it's also found in a few like poppy math rock style songs as well. And it catches your ear because of the distinct sound of this tuning. The next thing to address is, yes, you will have to tune some of the strings up for this tuning, but don't worry, as long as you've put the strings on correctly, it's very unlikely that you're going to snap any of them. For now, I recommend using the guitar that you've got to try out this tuning. However, if you do find you really enjoy it and you want to keep your guitar in this tuning for the long run, or maybe you've got a spare guitar you can do this with, then you might want to compensate the string gauges for dropping that low E down to D and tuning these higher three strings up. A shameless plug, I've got a, a more detailed guide about the different string gauges that you can use in my Math Rock Essentials ebook, as well as a lot of other stuff about these tunings. There's a link for that down below in the description. Ultimately, though, if you are worried about snapping strings, then an alternative is to put throw a thicker gauge of strings on there, maybe go up from one gauge from what you usually use, then tune down to C, G, D, G, B, D, which is the same tuning, uh, but a step lower. Had to really think about that one there. Well, how do we write in this tuning without having to do what feels like the, the daunting task of relearning the guitar? It's actually pretty straightforward. In fact, I'm going to show you a few examples of songs using this tuning, and here Here's an A major scale superimposed across the entire fretboard. While listening to these examples, I want you to see if you notice any patterns forming. Hopefully you noticed that all three examples there were using notes from this A major scale to create ideas. In fact, the entirety of those songs just stick to using this A major scale. And this explains why songs sound quite similar in this tuning. This isn't a bad thing, of course. In fact, it's what makes D, A, E, A, C sharp E tuned songs have a unique sound to them. If you wanted a different feel to your music, then you could perhaps tune to a different tuning or you could just stick in standard tuning. Putting this aside though, this means that we can use this A major scale as a song generation tool to create some awesome ideas. So am I asking you to memorize this entire scale across every part of the fretboard? No, of course not. But I am asking you to use this chart as a guide to consult it as you write ideas. And this is going to be, like I said, a system for generating ideas. And if you were to combine this with some of the most common approaches to the ways that guitarists generate song ideas from inspiration, from using your own life experiences, collaboration with other musicians, to exploring new techniques, or even using music theory approaches, could all work for crafting song ideas. However, if you are new to the tuning, I recommend the following easier approach, and that is improvisation. And what I mean by this is just sitting there, looking at that chart and letting your fingers wander around and just finding ideas with not really paying too much attention. And don't forget to use those open strings, the doubling of these notes. Makes the job easier of learning it as well.
And you start to learn these little cluster of notes and hopefully hidden in there is a little spark for a new song idea. And in my experience, this approach will help you become more familiar with where all these notes are in a much more fun and productive way. But there is a hack that you can apply that pretty much guarantees that you will be coming up with ideas every time. Going back to one of our earlier examples, there's something else that we can learn when looking at this example. And I wonder if you can spot that. <laughs> what you noticed there was the ideas were being launched from these lower notes, a kind of harmony so to speak in that um, you know, tiny moving parts example. We had this kind of chord progression going on. So it's like they are playing the, the chord progression and the lead part at the same time. And now you're aware of this, you will notice it happening in a ton of other songs that use alternative tunings, especially in like math rock and math rock adjacent music. And I want you to combine this with your noodling around on the fretboard to find ideas, but also thinking about the harmony as well. You don't always have to be playing the harmony, of course, but if you are aware of it, you could work out where you are on the fretboard in relation to what your bass player is playing, for example, or if you were creating the, the extra accompanying instruments. So for example, if I went back to that idea that I was playing in the intro, if that was my chord progression, I know I have these lower harmony notes. And I can look at this note here and I can whittle around on the fretboard to think of ideas. And here's something that I was working with earlier. Like I said, it didn't come up out that way straight away. And your ideas can be as simple, as complex as you like. It's just the feeling that you're going with with your song. Um, I could keep those notes ringing, right? <laughs> Well, the thing is, now you know a scale that can assist you in more easily creating ideas. The next thing you might be wondering is, well, what are some chords that I can use in DAEA C sharp E tuning? So watch this video next to learn some of the most inspiring chords in this tuning. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the patrons that support the channel, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.